Welcome back to the channel, everybody. I am Brian Lee Durfee, author of The Forgetting Moon and The Blackest Heart, both books published by Simon & Schuster's Saga Press. Today I'm going to be reviewing Black Cross by Greg Isles. So let's get into that. Before we get into that, though, let's talk about there's a difference in my set here. Um, it's, I've had to widen out the uh, scope of it so you don't get close-ups of me anymore. Um, I've also brightened up the lighting, so the lighting may seem a little harsh. I might wear less hats in the videos, or I might wear the hats backwards, because my face is in shadow, um, although I do look better in the dark. So maybe I will keep the hats on, just so uh, I can still remain handsome. But, you know, we'll probably just do this dorky thing here through most of the videos, just because... Uh, We've had to make some changes because my eyesight is deteriorating. That's the reason. And I've got to brighten things up and make things bigger and easier for myself if I want to. And if you want to know why my eyesight's deteriorating, just type in my last name, Durfee, and the word blind. And that and that uh, video will come up where I explain what's happened to me. And uh, eventually I will be blind. But, you know, we're going to carry on until that day. And we'll still keep doing book covers until that day. Black Cross. Greg Isles came out in 1995, the second book Greg Isles ever wrote. You know, I'm a huge Greg Isles fan. Uh, I've got all of his books over here in my library. We will go clear over here to the other side of the library. That is my Greg Isles collection right there. This is the second book of his that I am reviewing. I did review Spandau Phoenix earlier, which was his first ever novel he published, which was also a thriller set in World War II. This is a thriller set in World War II. If you couldn't tell by the cover, it's about uh, Nazis, the SS in Germany, and all those types of wicked things. So let's talk about it. Well, we just discussed the cover. You know I love graphic design and uh, cover illustration. So let's just take a little closer look at this bad boy because it's, I think it's pretty cool. Just graphically, it stands out. Um, and uh, yeah, I, I, yeah, I don't think it um, gives away what's in, I mean, you would never know this was about Germany just based off the cover. Never. You would never guess. Anyway, so, oh, also, before I forget, because you know I name drop like a mother -er, and I, whenever I meet my favorite writers, I get my book signed, and Greg Isles has signed his book to me, as he signed most of my collection. Anyway, just, you know, name dropping, throwing that out there. Always makes me look more important than I really am when I uh, show those signatures. Anyway, this is about a young man who is, uh, starts out a young man is at his grandfather's funeral. And uh, someone pulls him aside and says, hey, i got to tell you some secrets about your grandpa. Anyway, they go back to grandpa's house. They look, they're digging around through the attic. And they find a sort of a safe full of treasures. Four mysterious objects. Relics. That, that date back to a, a certain night in 1944 that turned this guy's, this gentleman's grandfather into a war hero. That's what we find. And the dude that's with them is like, these relics, these things mean more than you know. They're not just war um, trophies. They, they actually mean more, and then let me tell you what it is about. So then we flash back to 1944, where we meet the dude's grandfather, um, who goes by the name of McConnell. And McConnell is, um, he's just kind of a pacifist, a doctor. He doesn't really, living in England, uh, the, the war is starting, you know, they know that they're going to have to invade um, uh, England soon, and um, so things happen and this, that, and the other. I don't know, that's a really bad uh, review. The, the, you know, things happen in the book, this, that, and the other. That's my review. Ten stars. No, any of these. Uh, as, the, as these flashbacks happen, we, we, we learn that the young man, the young gentleman, uh, these things, that these trophies that he finds in the box, they might not be... Um, as noble as possible. I mean, questions arise. These, uh, 
his grandfather, like I said, was a pacifist, and he's the grandfather, along with a German nurse, a Zionist uh, sort of assassin, and a Jewish widow. They um, are uh, taken underhand by Winston Churchill, and they are given a mission. I mean, they all sort of end up in this SS concentration camp together. Under the sort of supervision of uh, Winston Churchill, there's a plan. They've got to figure out what there's, there's supposedly hinted at a biological weapon that the Soviets and the, uh, not the Soviets, but the um, Germans are working on that will wipe out just, it will just devastate, devastate the world, this bioweapon. And it's kind of then, and now, so now in the book, we're getting into the meat of the book where if you like books about just um, how evil the Nazis were, and how some of the experiments that people that were done in Dachau prison camp, like by Mengele, Joseph Mengele, some of these prison experiments, some of these just just the horrors that they inflicted. If you like books that explore that and the um, and the people that were around that and how they handled that and how Hitler, um, you know, let that kind of thing happen and actually encouraged that kind of thing. How all of the German leaders were just like, yeah, go ahead do these things. If, you, if you're if you into that type of history, it's dark, it's grim, and it's hard to read about. Um, but I think it's important to read about because these characters, like these, this pacifist, this doctor, um, doesn't want to kill. But then he's confronted with these horrors, and then then he's got a dilemma. Do, do I have to kill? I mean, will, how much can I? I mean, I just, how many can I, do I have to kill? And it's like, it's, it's like very, it goes into some really psychological, um, areas that I wasn't expecting, um, where people are just caught in their own dilemma. Like there's so much evil. I want to be a force of good. I've been a force of good and pacifism my whole life. I've been a force of turn the other cheek. And yet here I am confronted with this evil, this bioterrorist thing that will wipe out. And they know that D-Day is coming, and then they know that the armies, oh, the American armies, and the, they're going to invade France soon. But this bioweapon will destroy those armies like that. Like that. And so what do they do? What do these characters do that have been sort of um, infiltrating this concentration camp and getting into these uh, medical experiments? You'll have to read it to see what they do. But it's not all flower and roses and happy endings here, folks. It's just sort of this thriller that really, I, I think it really makes you ask the question of what would you do in certain situations, even though um, they conflict with every moral you've ever had. Um, great book. Great book. Um, I don't think I did much justice in even describing it. Other than an overall theme, Black Cross by Greg Isles. I actually kind of liked Spandau Phoenix a little bit more than this. A Black Cross and Spandau Phoenix are his two international World War II thrillers. After that, he abandoned sort of the thriller genre and went more into murder mysteries, and he's dynamite at that. That's where I think his strength is. These, This is his second book. Um... I like the first one, Spandau Phoenix, a little bit better. I did like this one quite a bit, though, for the things that I mentioned in it. Uh, I'm giving it 8.5 out of 10 stars. It is really, really, really a solid, solid World War II thriller that really hits you in the grims. I mean, if you like... It's, it's grim. 